G'day listeners and welcome back to another episode of the Keeper League podcast. We're the AFL fantasy podcast that doesn't talk about the superstars. We only talk about the lesser knowns and the players that are going to bring value to your draft and Keeper League teams. Today I'm joined by a man who needs no introduction. Uh, he is one third of the DT Talk slash the Traders team. Uh, he's a blue supporter. He is none other than Adam Roy Davey. How are you, mate? Great, mate. How are you? Yeah, going really well. Thanks heaps for uh, giving up your time and coming onto the show. It's pretty exciting to get a, a guest of your calibre on here, mate. <laughs> well, I don't think so, but uh, absolute honour to be on the show, mate. And thank you for letting me talk about the blues because, you know, I get pretty up and about. <laughs> I do, mate. I do. I've heard you on your show many a time. And uh, yeah, no bias at all when it comes to talking about blues players either, is there? <laughs> Thank you for recognising that because the accusations flying around at the moment, uh, it's next level. So thank you for recognising that. All right. On to Carlton though. Um, look, they were big improvers last year. They actually had 12 players within the top 150. Now, I'm not sure if you know this, but we don't talk about the one top 150 um, during the preseason. Um, so that doesn't leave us a lot to talk about. But we'll talk about the Blues in general. So they focused on picking up outside runners in the offseason. You got Blake Akers in and then the draft, you went super heavy on outside runners. Do you think there's something in that that might change the way that they play. There was more scoring coming from your inside midfielders and not a lot of others, uh, except for Doc maybe. What do you think is going to happen? Oh, I think that is purely to add the polish. So I don't think it's going to change um, a lot for those the grunt um, workers that are the good scorers. I think it's just adding the, the polish um, that they need on the outside. So I don't think anything too significant um, will shift. If um, if Sam Walsh was playing, I think there would be a, a big flow on um, effect um, with those guys that are are the inclusions. But I think it's going to be a pretty smooth um, know what you're going to get type setup with um, with those inclusions on the wing that you're talking about. All right. Uh, well, that's good to hear because, um, yeah, it's kind of hard to predict when new players come in and how that's going to affect fantasy scoring, but hopefully you don't see too much change. Um, all right, this season or this preseason on the podcast, we are separating some players we're talking about into undervalued players, breakout contenders, and stash options. Now, um, we'll go through those in a bit more detail in a second, but the first player we're going to talk about is Zach Williams. Now, he was on the verge of um, becoming an elite defender at GWS. Since moving to Carlton, though, things haven't really gone to plan. He's been injury affected, uh, used as a midfielder a bit. Um, where does he play this year, do you think, and really what can you see him averaging for uh, his owners out there? Oh, well, the thing is with um, Zach Williams, I'm a massive fan and I always have been. He, it's just the fact that he hasn't been able to get a good run at it. Now, probably last year, the year before, I would have said Walsh out, Williams goes straight into the middle. But with, um, you know, people like Kennedy that have embraced the extra opportunities that they were given through the midfield, I don't think that spot is going to be there. So I think he is well and truly... A defender now, even though, as you said, we did see um, bits of him through the midfield. I don't think it's going to happen, but I think I agree with your label of undervalued for Zach Williams. There is no reason as a defender he can't average, you know, in the 80 sort of range, in my opinion. And God, that's so much less than I've um, projected him to be able to score in the past. So, I love him as a player. He's someone that I'm going to be um, keeping my on my eye on in every draft that um, that I'm in, hoping he slips to where I think I can go bang because I think he's going to be great. And we saw him play well. There was a three week stretch last year where I was like, um, I think it was round two, three, and four. I was like, Z Will is back, and he showed what he can do. Um, obviously, there's always risk with him, but um, I think. Yeah, I think he's one to certainly keep an eye on. To be honest, I'm happy to see him back in defence, really, because, you know, like when he was playing at GWS, that was probably his best scoring days as well. Um, you've tried the midfield thing. It hasn't really worked. Got enough midfield depth anyway. I'm looking forward to seeing him on the halfback flank anyway this season, so should be good to see. Now, the next guy, it, it would be remiss of us not to talk about this guy on the Keeper League podcast. We've written a bloody song about him in the past. There's been a bit of chatter. He has died down, I must admit, in the last week or so. But Paddy Dow, there was a, when I wrote out this uh, show document, there was a bit of talk that he might be the Sam Walsh replacement. Do you reckon there's any chance of that happening? <laughs> no chance. <laughs> no chance at all. Unless, actually, I shouldn't say no chance. If Paddy Dow has come to his senses and spent the off-season in the gym 
so he won't get pushed around and flicked around like a pinball, maybe there is a chance he's given another opportunity in the middle. But unless that has happened, I just I just do not think that is the answer. We've got, we're talking about a team that not only has finals aspirations, they're talking a big game, like top four type targets. Paddy Dow in the middle is not going to get you there. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I do agree, mate. I feel bad saying it. But. I do agree. But, um, like I said, he's uh, lucky to be valued at all, let alone be in the undervalued uh, category. But I thought we'd just chuck let that in there. Let alone have a song about him. <laughs> well, that's it. All right. Well, we'll move on to some breakout contenders. Now, this guy's a, a bit, a getting on a bit. He's not really a, a spring chicken like the other breakout contenders we talk about. But more to do with role change, and that's Mitch McGovern. Um, he switched to defence last year, um, and I think he has a defender status this year in fantasy as well. Missed a lot of the year through injury, but put up a few handy scores. Does this role continue? And do you think like an average of about 70 like he was getting when he was playing a defence is out of the question this year? Yeah, definitely. So um, I I think he's well worth talking about in that role. Um, well, he, he gets his fair share of intercept marks and he gets used every now and again on the way out as well. I think that um, target of 70 is really fair for him. So I agree that um, he's another one certainly to watch. He will fluctuate a little bit. There's some some games where he just appears to be everywhere down there and other games it's um, it's hard to spot him. But across the course of the season, hopefully he can stay on the park because he's actually become really important for Colton's structure back there. But I think that's 70, if that's what you're happy with, I think that's um, well and truly fair and I'd be targeting that in the 70 range for sure. He's the kind of guy that you pick as like your last, you know, you're playing a team of 12, you pick as your last defender and he sits on there yep. and Hopefully can get you a 70 much week, most 100%. weeks. So, yeah, yeah, less appealing without that forward status, though. It would have been nice if he mm. held that last year and played more football and put up some better scores, but wasn't to be. Um, we'll move on to Tom DeConing. So he fits the mould of the actual you know, typical breakout player in terms of years in the system um, and past performances as a ruckman. But the talk is around Carlton that Pitnet is going to be the number one ruckman. And a bit of research came out in an article I read during the week, uh, somewhere along the line, that he is one of the best hit out to advantage ruckmans, ruckman in the competition. So I did not know that, but um, if that's the case, I can definitely see Pitnet still playing in the forward, uh, sorry, in the ruck. So do you think De Koning has that ruck forward role again? And is there any chance of a breakout there? Yeah, so I see natural improvement because I think he's a great young talent. Um, but I, I agree. I didn't know statistically that um, Pitto was up there in the elite category for that. But just trusting the eye, I know how important he is to Colton's um, set up around the ground. So um, I think it will still be that forward ruck role. And there could even – the problem is even though I see improvement – from him, there could be weeks where he does actually um, miss. Like we saw that last year when Pitto was available. He yeah. did miss the odd game if it wasn't good um, for the opposition uh, set up. He will be better than that. Um, I, I think – I don't think a huge breakout – is on the cards. I think that's still a couple of years away, but I am certainly a big fan um, of what he produces and – the, there will be improvement there. So there's a little bit of meat on the bone, I reckon. He might be one to chuck into our next category, which is the stash options, because he might be one yep. you want to hold on to for a few more years until um, Petnet kind of moves aside and then he can kind of take over as number one ruck. But uh, looking through your list, you don't have a lot of stash options. A lot of the players in your list have been on the list in a while. You know what you're going to get. But a young player that I think is probably a bit of ways, you know, a year or two off playing, but that's Jack Carroll. He was um, really promising on debut last year, scored 80 in his first match. Um, his a really good underage scorer from memory. Um, so, yeah, he was one I was looking at uh, in drafts and I've got him on my rookie list actually in my keeper league, um, which means I can hold him for a little bit longer. But he was used more as a forward for the Blues. Um, is that his role? Do you ever see a midfield role for him or is he going to be more of that kind of pressure forward, small forward type? Look, I think um, there's a bit of a, a line at the moment um, in terms of there's a fair bit of talent in the Colton midfield. I certainly see him um, ending up there, but – probably just pinch hitting um, when given an opportunity over the next couple of years. He's definitely someone I would stash though. I'm with you. I think um, as a junior, he was impressive. And when we did see him, from memory, I think he took seven seven and eight marks um, in two of his four uh, games. And so I think he kicked a few goals in one of them as well, which he was did. pretty impressive. Yep, he yeah. definitely hit the scoreboard. So um, I'm, a, I'm a fan 
Um, I don't think he's going to be in that midfield rotation anytime soon, but I think it will come and I'd um, comfortably stash him waiting for it for sure. All right. Uh, that really brings us to the end of the list. Is there anyone you'd like to add? Anyone you think I've missed or in inside word? What's the go? Look, I, no, there's certainly not. It's um, You've pretty much summed it up. It, they do sound like a pretty boring uh, team at the moment. I think um, in years to come, I think Lockie Cowan – is going to be someone who can potentially slot in um, when we when those um, aging Blues defenders start to to drop off. I think if he hangs in there and has a good um, couple of years playing in the Magoos, I think he's someone that could pop up um, and be you know a pretty respectable player. And he's certainly someone as a junior who can um, pump out some pretty impressive numbers. That's a really good advert for our uh, rookie podcast that we put out in uh, November. We go into Lockie Cowan in great detail. So if you want to get your hands oh, on really? that one, yeah, sign up as a sign up as a member and uh, get your hand on that one. Uh, also, our drafty analysis kit, actually. Um, yeah, we go into depth, and he's one of my favourites in the draft. Lockie Cowan, actually. Yeah, uh, see a Tassie boy. Yeah, he certainly is. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, and a fantasy jet as well. <laughs> Yes, yes. Oh, so I am. I'm on the money yeah, with that on the money one. With that one, so that's good. <laughs> oh, no, I like it. But um, as you were saying, with um, oh, who were we talking about in the the ruck? De Koning. Oh, yeah, De Koning. So, what what are your thoughts on him? Uh, De Koning. I'm I'm pretty much the same as you. I think. Pitnet looks like the guy who's going to win you the uh, win you the hitouts in the middle, and he's useful up forward as kind of like you. I know you've got two main kind of key targets, but he's. Handy as that third option, I think that's where he's probably going to go as well. So I'm not expecting big things from him. So, yeah, not to no. – yeah, the but anyway, that, he, he fits the, the mould. The minute, the minute that transition happens, it's going to go bang, I think. Like um, even if Pitto goes down, I think it could be – then I'm back on the potential breakout watch for – to Conning. And it's going to be handy because we'll have Ruck Ford status as well. So someone you could use yes. if you've got him on your bench too. Anyways, we might wrap it up there, mate. So thank you very much for joining us on today's podcast. Uh, anything else you want to plug? Uh, listen to your podcast each week. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, well, listen to it if you want to. Otherwise, I'm sure you guys have got everything covered. <laughs> well, you guys can focus on the superstars and we'll focus on the lesser knowns. I think that's uh, <laughs> sounds good. perfect harmony, I reckon. Anyways, uh, get around us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok uh, at Keeper League Pod on all of those platforms. Uh, if you want to support the podcast, please sign up as a member, uh, you know, and then, uh, yeah, that'll keep us going for a few more months. Anyway, thanks for joining us, Roy, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Pleasure. See you, mate.